and hey tubers welcome back for another adventure I don't know if you guys recognize this engine I picked it up up in Kingston for 40 bucks and it came in with a uh, bent exhaust valve um, this is the valve that bent and I had a choice for this I could have bought a replacement head this is a 125 cc and I wasn't exactly sure that the replacement head would fit they're not they're not very careful when they describe these so instead of that I decided to buy the kit I replaced the valve and even the valve I think you guys could see the replacement valve is quite a bit bigger than the old valve I think they ran this without an exhaust system got the valve um, cherry head cherry red right from uh, running without the exhaust it got crazy hot and then you know it probably when they shut it down the valve was not contacting the seat so as it cooled off it warped a little bit the engine lost compression and uh, ended up being sold for 40 bucks I was told that this was pulled from an um, ATV and they replaced the motor this is worth putting a little time and effort into especially given the initial cost of 40 bucks because it's a, a three-speed plus it has reverse right so I kind of consider this top of the heap when it comes to engines made in China right it's a copy of the Honda horizontal right the piston travels more or less horizontally it's it's a nice motor and hopefully we can bring it back to life hopefully this valve works so at this point I have 40 bucks tied up in the engine probably another 40 50 bucks tied up between the valve and the spring compressor right to take it apart and all that other stuff let's call it a hundred dollar engine so at this point I'm I'm feeling a bit cheap when I took it apart you know I put everything right in here highly recommend it um, I was careful right we still have the o-ring there and the other one down here so I'm not replacing gaskets I'm just gonna kind of smash it together as is I'm just noticing this um, this gasket though it's gonna work <laughs> it's it's not even a great fit um, and that's the one it came with anyway so we got to put it together where do you start you start with the piston all the way up you guys could see it's down right the valves closed and we'll check the timing marks we'll get everything set up slide it together and uh, I'll, I'll show you that as we're doing it so we have to get the engine timed you need the piston up and you take a look in there and you will see a line and to the right of it a T that's when you know you're a top dead center just want to kind of get it so you guys could see it and you want to be perfectly at top dead center there is a little bit of a null so to speak so you want to get that right there you go. maybe I kind of had it before they may be there all right so line with the T to the right be careful don't line it up with fire you'll be too advanced so that's the first step your second step is to make sure the cam is set up here's your timing mark your timing mark nice set up you're all happy so at that point you could take the gear out slide this on set everything up make sure you don't leave your gasket behind right there's one that goes there and one that goes here make sure they're both in place 
If you don't, she'll leak oil. Okay, I think you guys could see I'm right at top dead center, right? I'm lined up right here like I need to be. Um, by the way, with the use of this, it was easier to pull it in, right? They, I think they literally set it up here. So when they were assembling it, it was easier to pull right into where it needed to be. So this thing at this point is all timed up. By the way, you really need the head tight down against this. So I put a couple of bolts in temporarily to pull this down. It just makes all of life much easier. Given that we really don't want to bend any valves, right? Do yourself a favor, put it together, turn it over a few times by hand, right? It should turn pretty easy, right? I, I have to plug in. I don't have the head tightened up all the way, but it feels like it's got the compression it should have and everything else. Um, double check your timing, right? You don't want one of those horrible surprises that leads to a clang and a bang. I also got the Valdez going on here. I'm glad I put this um, rag down to catch oil. Before you power up the starter and go ripping around looking for um, compression and so forth, trying to start it, make sure your valves are loose. I knew these were loose when I put it together um, so you should actually make sure that these these guys are loose you'll be able to tell when you turn it to top dead center but you know just double double check before you crank it or turn it or anything make sure these are loose um, if you run loose valves by the way <laughs> and you have one of these engines that fire on each RPM. Um, you only get one power stroke, but it fires on the dead stroke, so to speak. If your valves are loose, too loose, that's when they have a tendency to kick back. And you might say, why would that be? As you're coming up to pump the exhaust out if your valves are too loose and picture you have starting fluid and all that other stuff in there as it's coming up just before your top dead center or top yeah let's call it top dead center on the dead stroke um, your intakes closed your exhaust is closed right so you're coming up and you have just a touch of compression and particularly when you're using starting fluid, you might have the right mixture in here that when this thing comes up, before the intake opens for it to take in fresh oxygen and so forth, and the exhaust is closed, because remember, they're loose, right? So they both close early, right? As she's coming up, sometimes the mixture is just right, and it'll kick back. So... Once again, keep your valves adjusted properly. In my case, I know I'm running them loose, but if your engine's kicking back, it, it could easily be that they're, they're too loose. All right, it's all back together, right? All happy and good. Let's do a quick compression test, see how she's feeling. like we got just under 90 there considering um, this engine's been taken apart and put back together again uh, that's not too bad I'm gonna give it a little a little blast of WD-40 see if uh, that helps a little bit so it came in about exactly the same if the intake valve was leaking by um, I think it would have come in a tad lower, though it was the exhaust valve that I was messing with. But even with that, I gave it a pretty good blast. So some of that would have uh, blown onto the exhaust valve and helped seal it a little. So 
I think that's all it's going to come in at. I am curious to this if this is going to start. I think I think I'm going to take a little bit of a cheater's um, test fire. You know, we'll fire it up maybe on a little starting fluid. Now that it's got all that WD-40 in there and all, it uh, it should be able to start without any real pain. It does have some oil in there. We could tell it spilled. So it could probably use a little more, but I don't want to put any more in there until I'm going to put this engine into use. So let me uh, let me carry it outside and see what this puppy's going to do. Do not try this at home. So again, I might get a starting fluid. Perfect. No carburetor. We have ignition. And <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. So there we have it. It runs. You know what? Just for a laugh, I think I might uh I might just do another quick compression test on it, see if it got any better. So here we go. With the after start compression test, let's see if things got any better. Nope, just about exactly the same, right? Just under 90. Well, there we have it. We took a $40 engine. We put a valve into it, lapped it a little bit, put it together on the original gasket set, got it to start. So it runs. Hopefully the transmission is good. I'm debating whether to put this guy or this guy on the Wilderness Trail 90. If I put this guy on there, that's another 90cc, 4-speed. It's got some pluses. It's a Honda. <laughs> this guy gets me to electric start, three speed, plus reverse. Reverse is a nice thing. Also brings me up to 125 cc's. That's not a bad thing at all, right? A little more power, nothing amazing, but a little more. The only thing that concerns me for both this engine and that engine over the 90 cc is this spacing here. In this space here, I need to get a carburetor onto it, and um, the bar, the frame bar, goes by and is kind of tight to that. So, it might, actually, it might not be a decision. I might end up just putting on whatever fits, or being stuck with the 90. Um, I think that's about that. I really want to thank you guys for dropping by to watch and comment, subscribe. Please remember to keep your feet down, your heads up, and get out there and enjoy each and every day. For everyone who didn't see my last video, Happy New Year. Bye now.